The son of a noble warrior teams up with the evil king that his father once fought before. Why would he do that? Let's find out in the Russian Disney film, The Last Knight. In another world called Belogoria, the kingdom's guards are hunting a warrior named Alyosha. When an owl tackles him out of his horse, a battle ensues between him and the guards. Being a warrior, he defeats all of them easily. But the owl returns and transforms into a sorceress named Vivara. Using her magic, she makes Alyosha's sword soft, leaving him powerless against her. Another guard then arrives with Alyosha's horse, which transforms into an old wizard. Varvara shows him how she effortlessly turns Alyosha into a stone statue. However, when she is also about to petrify the wizard to finally finish her mission, he suddenly runs and jumps off the cliff. Transforming into a fish, the wizard swims away from the statues of all the warriors that Varvara has defeated. Meanwhile, in Moscow, a con artist named Ivan joins a psychic contest where he wins after conspiring with one staff member of the show. With his moniker, Sviator the Wizard of Light, he pretends to wield the power of the sun god. Later arriving at home, he chats with his housekeeper and friend, Galena. The next day, Ivan meets with a client and performs a rite to quote-unquote cleanse her aura. Yet, to get more money, he lies that her husband is cheating on her, and more spells and rites will make him fall head over heels for her once again. After that, he receives a call from the aunt of a comatose boy asking for his help to wake up his nephew. However, seeing the boy's condition, Ivan suddenly backs out and leaves the hospital. On his way, he recalls his childhood. In the past, Ivan grew up being bullied in an orphanage. But one night, after being locked inside a closet, he decided to get his revenge. Finding a large needle inside the closet, Ivan used it to get out and sewed the blankets of his bullies in their bedsheets. When they woke up the next morning, everyone laughed at them. Since then, Ivan keeps the needle and makes a necklace out of it as his lucky charm. But his travel to memory lane is interrupted by the husband of his client earlier. Bringing two men, he tries to confront Ivan about what he told his wife about him cheating on her. Ivan quickly runs away towards a public pool to escape. However, as he pushes a man aside and goes down a slide, he finds himself landing in the forest instead of the water. Confused, Ivan looks inside the trunk from where he emerges and gets spooked by the sudden appearance of an old wizard. He hits the man, yet the wizard is already behind him, making the remark that Ivan is just like his father. The old wizard then informs him that he is now in Belogoria and some people are coming for them so they need to leave now. But Ivan just tells him to leave him alone and when the old wizard insists, he picks up a branch to scare him. To his surprise, it becomes a full-grown tree. Thinking of a sensible justification, he convinces himself that he got thrashed so badly and ends up in a coma dreaming of everything. On the contrary, the old wizard negates his coma theory, explaining that Ivan is the son of Ilya Muromets, one of Belogoria's most noble warriors who asked him to hide Ivan in the other world to keep him safe. All of a sudden, they hear horses neighing nearby, which prompts the old wizard to quickly give Ilya's ring to Ivan. Just then, an arrow hits him in the back and he perishes. When the kingdom's guards arrive, Ivan introduces himself as the son of Ilya, which doesn't seem to stop the guards from moving toward him. Because of that, Ivan goes for a run, but he bumps his head into a branch and gets caught by the guards. Ivan is then taken to the palace where Dabrina, the warrior who rules Belogaria, is feasting with his men. When the guards arrive, they inform him of what Ivan told them. Dabrina is Ilya's sworn brother, and upon seeing Ivan wearing Ilya's ring, he gladly welcomes him to the palace. At this time, Varvara shows up, who turns out to be Dobrynya's wife. He introduces her to Ivan, who gets stunned by her beauty. Varvara then points out that Ivan must be tired, so Dobrynya asks her to accompany him to the bedchamber. But instead of bringing him to a room, Varvara quietly orders the guards to throw Ivan in the dungeon. There, he meets a frozen man with dismembered body parts named Kashi. Unexpectedly, Kashi knows who he is and where he came from. Their conversation is briefly interrupted when an old witch named Baba Yaga is brought to the dungeon. Continuing their talk, 
Ivan wants to know if there's a way for him to get back home. Kashi then begins to tell a story about a magic sword that can open a portal to the other world. Long ago, there was a powerful wizard living in Belogoria with his apprentice. One day, the wizard decided to become immortal. By putting a magic crystal into the magic sword during a solar eclipse, one can achieve immortality. However, the student killed his teacher, claiming immortality for himself. As his soul was put into the crystal, his death was also forged in it as well. And that student is Kashi himself. The incident allows eternal darkness to doom Belogoria under his rule. After ruling the kingdom for a thousand years, the warriors emerged with the promise to defeat him. After succeeding, the warriors isolated the magic sword from the crystal of immortality. Then, they put a spell into the sword, and Ilya was the one who hid it away. Meanwhile, Dobrynya took care of the crystal while Koshi got locked up in the dungeon. Hearing all this, Ivan asks where the sword is, but Koshi doesn't disclose it to him. Instead, he says that the good have already won in Belogoria, so the warriors are not needed anymore. With that, Ivan will either be beheaded or turned into stone soon. Meanwhile, Baba Yaga blows a magic breath, waking up the frog hiding in her bag, which then transforms into a woman named Vasilisa. Vasilisa puts a sleeping drug into the dungeon guard's drink, knocking him off. After that, she frees Baba Yaga, and the two of them help release Koshi. As it turns out, Baba Yaga purposely turns herself in as part of her and Koshi's plan of setting him free. Sometime later, the two women finally finish assembling Koshi's body. Seeing this, Ivan pleads to take him with them. Vasilisa doesn't think they need him, but Koshi frees him, saying that he can be of use later on. Before they leave, Ivan gets back his things from the dungeon guard. Unfortunately, he accidentally pushes him off his seat, ringing the bell connected to the guard's arm. Due to that, the kingdom's guards show up immediately to stop them from escaping. Vasilisa and Koshi fight the guards and successfully take them down. The four then continue their escape, riding in a hut that has feet. During the commotion, Varvara wakes up from her sleep and gets informed of the situation. She then transforms into an owl and joins the pursuit. Upon seeing Varvara, Baba Yaga attacks her through the hut's chimney. This causes the guards to stop chasing them and attend to Varvara first. When morning comes, Varvara tells Dobrina that Ivan has helped with the escape of Koshi. Dobrina feels sorry for Ilya because he thinks that Ivan has been tricked by the evil king to be a bad person. Left with no other choice, he orders Varvara to lead the search for the escape. Concurrently, Ivan and the others settle for a while in the middle of the forest. Baba Yaga orders Ivan to get the cauldron and salt from the hut, but he ends up burning it with his lighter. He tries to put the fire away, but it just gets worse. Baba Yaga and Vasilisa quickly come to save everything they can from the fire, but the hut runs away. Angry, Baba Yaga assaults him and threatens to eat him. Luckily for him, Koshi stops her, saying that Ivan is the only one who can find the magic sword because he's Ilya's son. He also promises Ivan that he will send him back to his world when they find it. Hearing this, Ivan gets excited and comes along on their journey. The group then starts heading to the White Mountains, where the magic sword is hidden. On their way, Ivan even takes some selfies with the others. A while later, they stop at the swamp where the merman lives because they need to convince the merman to help them safely cross the Death River. To get his favor, Koshi states that an offering of a beautiful woman is required. Vasilisa then puts herself as the bait, but when the merman shows up and approaches Vasilisa, his friend Lobster tells him that she is just a frog. Due to that, Merman gets angry and attacks Vasilisa. Ivan quickly gets to her aid, and Koshi shows up as well, trying to calm Merman down. However, Baba Yaga knows it will not work, so she uses a magic apple, which makes her look younger. Falling into Baba Yaga's seduction, the Merman agrees to go with them. After a while, Varvara and the kingdom's guards arrive at the swamp, trying to catch their escaped prisoners. When she gets the information she needs from Merman's lobster friend, she fires a magic arrow back to the palace. 
The arrow lands on a guard who's fitting armor in front of Debrina. Then, Varvara briefly possesses the guard, informing Debrina that Merman had just joined Koshi's quest. Going back to the group, they arrive at a cave where a giant lives. They try to quietly walk past it without getting the attention of the giant. But Ivan's alarm rings, alerting the giant of their presence, which causes it to attack them. Knowing that they're no match for the giant, all they can do is evade and hide. At this time, Vasilsa challenges Ivan to defeat the giant, proving that he's a true warrior like his father. Ivan declines at first, afraid that he might get hurt or die. But seeing how dire their situation is, he decides to give it a shot. Observing the giant, he realizes that it's a female giant. Because of that, Ivan gets an idea and plays music from his phone. Purposely picking the attention of the giant, Ivan dances with her. As he entertains the giant, the others take the opportunity to escape and Ivan follows afterward. Later, they reach the Death River, which looks like just a normal river, but full of piranhas. With that, Merman goes into the river to start asserting his dominance again over the Death River. However, he immediately emerges from the water, declaring that he fails since the piranhas don't listen to him anymore after long years of being gone. With no other way to cross the Death River, the group, especially Vasilsa, loses hope of getting the sword. It turns out that Vasilsa is not a frog that can transform into a woman, but a woman cursed to become a frog. Not too long ago, Varvara and Dobrina were passing through Vasilsa's village. Seeing that Dobrina was stunned by her beauty, Varvara gets jealous and curses Vasilsa and her family into becoming frogs. Only with Baba Yaga's help can she transform back into a human. And Koshi has promised her that he will break the curse on her family with the sword's help. Then, Koshi asks Ivan to talk to her while he tries to find them some dinner. Following Koshi's request, Ivan goes after Vasilsa and comforts her. Afterward, he sees a cute little bunny and gives it to her to make her smile. However, when the bunny's eyes glow blue, Vasilsa quickly tosses it away, knowing that they're in trouble. Just then, the bunny transforms into Vavara. Ivan and Vasilsa run back to Koshi and Baba Yaga to alert them about the enemies, but they're already cornered by the guards. Left with no other options, the four of them jump into a well and cover the entrance. Fortunately, there happens to be another route for them to cross the Death River through a tunnel covered with a large boulder that can be found at the bottom of the well. Merman drinks all the water from the well so the others can remove the boulder and escape through the tunnel. But at this moment, Varvara gets down the well and petrifies Merman, which also causes all the water that he drank to be released, throwing her back out of the well. Afterward, the group gets out of the tunnel safely and continues their journey to the White Mountains. Later that night, while they are resting, Ivan and Vasilsa share a romantic moment together. He gives her the needle necklace, expressing that it is magic of his. But when the two are about to kiss, they get interrupted by the frogs croaking. The next morning, Ivan is about to go for a walk, but sees that Varvara and her men have already caught up with them. He tries to warn the others, but he's taken down by the guards. During the capture, Vasilsa tries to fight, but she falls into the river. Luckily for her, Ivan's necklace hangs up into a plant stem, and she manages to transform into a frog in time to hold onto it. Hearing a frog croaking, Ivan realizes that Vasilsa escapes and there's still hope. However, instead of taking Ivan, Koshi, and Baba Yaga back to the kingdom, Varvara and her men take them to the White Mountains. There, she orders Ivan to look for the magic sword. Not knowing which is which, Ivan picks a random sword on the ground in hopes of fooling Varvara, but fails miserably. With that, he tries to run away, yet he gets cornered by her magic. Panicking, he picks up the nearest branch to defend himself, and to everyone's surprise, the branch turns into a magic sword. Using it, he slashes through Vavara's magic and then orders the guards to stand down, freeing Koshi and Baba Yaga. But when he hands over the sword to Koshi, Dabrina arrives in time and it is revealed that Koshi's been conspiring with Dabrina. Everything is plotted by the two of them since the beginning for Koshi to get his crystal and Dabrina to have the magic sword. Hearing all of this, Baba Yaga curses Koshi for using her and Ivan. 
However, Dobrina betrays Koshi as well by giving him a fake crystal. Just then, Vasilsa, who has been hiding all along, transforms back into her human form and tackles Dobrina. As the magic sword gets picked up by Ivan, she urges him to fight. To everyone's surprise, Ivan instead opens the portal to the other world and escapes. Angry and frustrated, Vasilsa throws back his necklace to him. Yet, after going back to his world, Ivan feels empty. Upon looking at his pictures with Vasilsa, Koshi, and Baba Yaga, he admits that he made the mistake of leaving them. With that, he quickly goes to the public pool and slides down the same slide. But this time, he falls into the water and his action causes him to be arrested and imprisoned. Yet, as luck has it for him, the old wizard is also there. According to him, after getting hit by the arrow, he escaped to his world but ended up in prison. He then tells Ivan that he can take them back to Belogoria if he gets his staff that was taken away by the police. But before returning, they need to plan their course of action when they go back to Belogoria first. Telling him that there's an imprisoned dragon in the dungeon called Gorinich that they need to release, the wizard gives Ivan magic dust to feed to the dragon. Then, with the help of the dragon, they can help rescue the others and fight Dabrina. With their plans properly laid out, Ivan tricks a police officer into giving him the old wizard's staff. The wizard then quickly opens the portal to Belogoria, but unfortunately gets caught by the reinforcements before he can follow Ivan, who is left to save his friends alone. Sneaking into the dungeon, Ivan is surprised to see that Gorinish is just a small dragon. Shortly after, the guards catch him and bring him to Dobrina, who's about to do the immorality ritual. There, he sees Vasilsa, Koshi, and Baba Yaga, who are going to be executed afterward. To prevent the execution, Ivan shoots Dobrina with a gun. However, it's useless because he already completed the ritual and is now immortal. At this time, the dragon shows up, distracting him and the others. Ivan takes the chance to apologize and free Vasilsa. Released, Vasilsa orders Ivan to draw away Dobrina's attention from the sword while she tries to break the crystal in it. Following her order, Ivan challenges Dobrina to a sword fight with him using a normal sword only. During their battle, it is revealed that Dobrina envied Ilya so much, and with Varvara's help, they turn Ilya and all the other warriors into stone statues so he can be the only warrior left to rule Belogoria. Being a warrior, Dobrina takes the upper hand and breaks Ivan's needle necklace. At the same time, Vasilsa tries to get her hands on the crystal, but Varvara comes to fight her. Without anyone noticing, Gorinish frees Koshi, who manages to pick the crystal up. Apologizing to Ivan for betraying him, Koshi tries to destroy it. However, Varvara throws an axe at him, cutting his arm off. Seeing Dobrina get distracted, Ivan stabs him in the foot using the needle necklace. Then. Koshi manages to destroy the crystal using the magic sword. This causes him and Dobrina to perish, ending his tiresome immortal life. Witnessing their defeat, Varvara flies away to escape. At this moment, her curse on the warriors is lifted and they all turn back to normal. Because of that, Ivan finally meets his father, Ilya. The kingdom celebrates Ivan's victory and Ilya's return. Even Merman and Baba Yaga get along well too although Merman still prefers Baba Yaga's youthful appearance. In the celebration, upon seeing a kid's server, Ivan remembers the comatose boy from the hospital. Asking permission from his father, Ivan goes back to Moscow and heals the boy with the Water of Life potion. He then returns to Belogoria and goes to Vasilsa's village so she can introduce him to her family. However, the movie surprisingly ends with the revelation that Varvara is the daughter of Galena, Ivan's housekeeper, and everything is their plan to rule Belogoria all along. The Last Night is a very fun movie to watch. Also, one would not expect this as a Disney movie because it has a cowardly and scammer prince for a protagonist. But it is indeed a breath of fresh air from the studio to make something like this. They managed to make a very generic plot of the last of its kind theme into something interesting to watch. Overall, The Last Night is a great movie to bond over with your family.